Hey everyone, Slothcake here and welcome back to some more NBA Wine. Now today we're going to be using the EXS Gundam, also known as the Extraordinary Superior Gundam, or the Extraordinary Supreme Gundam. Uh, not that supreme. But anyways, this is a 3000 cost mobile suit, and he is a long range mobile suit. And when I say long range, I really mean long range. This guy has the second longest red lock on in the game, first one belonging to the Heavy Arms EW. Now what does that mean? Well that means that unless you're fighting the Heavy Arms EW or have the mirror match, you will outrange everyone in this game. And this guy's kit all revolves entirely around long range. Now surprise surprise, the suit that's very long range is not that great up close. This guy doesn't have any special movement, his defense options aren't the greatest, you have to be creative if you want to get away from people, and you're going to just see me book it sometimes when people get up close, and sometimes you just got to do that. And if you want to play this guy, you just got to know that. However, this guy's very, just very like plain to learn. He's not too complicated. Really, if you're used to long range mobile suits, this guy's your guy. You just need strong fundamentals. And if you have that, he, you will strive with this guy. He is very easy to learn, and he's a very nice high cost long range suit. Which is again, if up your alley, give this guy a try. He's one of the easier high cost, I don't want to say sniper suits, but long range backline suits. Because I don't want to say support as well, because you're going to be easily doing a lot of damage with this dude if you play your cards right. But anyways, let me explain the kit. Now his kit's not too complicated. Only real complicated weapons are his last two, just because his snipe has a second thing he can do, and his income deflectors have these. It just takes a little bit of explaining. However, the visuals in the corner do help. I'm a visual learner, because if you tell me things verbally, it's going to go in one ear and come out the other one. I feel like expressing it through video is much easier. Anyways, main gun. 10 shots. <laughs> 10 shots is a lot for a main gun. It's a good beam rifle does some nice damage and it reloads per shot and it reloads fairly quickly per shot and again 10 shots that's a lot csa is an incom and just to get a little off topic incoms are in short the zeong's wired hands those psychom esque weapons that are attached to the mobile suit they're on the head and on the knees there's three of them in total the csa is the one on the head it will be sent out shoot at the enemy a few times and they're in the stun state for a little bit because of the constant shooting and you can follow up with your snipe if you're at a long distance or you can follow up with your main gun very nice csa very spammable because it charges really fast when you deploy it it doesn't stop you or anything so you can spam it all you want overall it's a great move you can use it in a ton of scenarios or you can just throw it out willy-nilly no, not really a downside to use it. Only big thing is if you go into MA mode, and yeah, he has an MA mode, the CSA will be retracted back to you. This means that even if it hasn't shot yet, or if it already shot, it would immediately come back to you when the second you enter MA. So you can use this, you deploy CSA, it shoots, enter MA mode, comes back, so you, now you can immediately start charging CSA. Because you cannot charge CSA while it's deployed, it has to come back to you. So if you send it to someone, and they're going the opposite direction, and you're going the opposite direction, it's going to take a few seconds for it to come back. Now going on to a second weapon, it's very similar to the double Zetas, uh, cannons on his back. Has the same properties, except this one's much bigger, and it does some hefty damage. But, the EX, no, I keep saying EXA. It's the EXS. Leans forward a little bit like the double Zeta, shoots it. Has a very wide hitbox because of the four cannons, and does some solid damage. You can combo into this, you can just throw this out and the wide hitbox might hit. You can also use this for defense because it's actually fairly quick and the wide hitbox can actually be kind of difficult to get out the way when you're up close. This only problem is this moves a little hard to hit someone when they're directly under you. Just because of how he shoots it, he leans forward. So just be careful about that. Other than that, overall, it's a great move. You have two shots, it reloads per shot, so just be a little careful. 
and it's mostly going to be used to finish your combos or just to apply more shots on screen. Now for this third weapon, that's a snipe. You have one per ammo and it has a fairly fast reload time for a snipe so that's actually a little surprising so you can use this move but some of these matches you don't see me use it more than I should however let's go into it it's a very standard snipe there is a second thing you can do with it but let's focus on the first one you take a position but paired up with your very long red lock on distance this is a fairly nice punish tool you can do a lot of things punish landings plan initial long startups someone's gonna shoot you with a move that has a long startup smack them out the sky someone coming at you straight at you smack them it's a snipe I don't really need to explain that much about the snipe part. If you hit left or right while inputting it, you will do a position moving you that direction as well. Now something I do have to explain is his second thing he can do with it. And that is 2 AC and this is high output smart gun. Now he'll take a similar position, however he'll shoot a continuous very thin Jirobi. This Jirobi is controllable. It's not bendable, it's controllable. Meaning that you can pivot around and move the entire gun, moving the entire Jirobi with it. Now this reaches the entire map, so even if someone's in green lock-on, they think they could be safe, they're not. You can bend this move quite some distance, well not bend it, move it. Use it moving all the way to the right, use this move moving all the way up, and use this move just moving randomly about. It's up to you, the player, to just practice this move, figure out, okay, how fast can I this beam go? How fast of a turn can it go? What directions can it go easily? Like, can it go right and immediately go left? Because you have to figure out how to use this tool. Like, you're gonna see me a lot use this, and I'm gonna be honest, I don't use this move the best. A lot of times I use the output and I bend it around and try to get someone and I'm like oh I just want one shot and I don't even get a single shot. It takes, it's gonna take practice. And I say that about everything but I seriously mean this move is gonna take practice. Cause once you figure it out and get it like wrapped around your head, it's like you're gonna be using this tool nicely. And that goes for the snipe part as well, not just the high output version, it's something that once you get comfortable with it once you stop fighting the move if you're gonna reap its rewards which is awesome now his second move very similar to his snipe in terms of learning it's something you gotta figure out how to use and it's something that once you figure it out it just clicks and you're like ah i get it and that is his uh what's it called the incom reflectors they're the ones on his knees and they're really weird positions i know it's a big suit but having like basically funnels on your knees is you know what, I won't question it. But what happens is a little bit of a startup, you send them out and depending on what input you do, we'll send them to that position. You know, back will do in front of the enemy, forward will do behind the enemy, left and right to the left or the right. Now like funnels, they'll go to the enemy and go to that position. However, unlike funnels, these will stay in that position and follow the enemy for a good amount of time. Now, if you hit BC again, You'll do similar to a sniper shot to the almost reflector which will bounce off the close most reflector which will hit the enemy. Now this means that if you send them out to the left of the enemy and then take the shot it will bounce off and hit to the left of the enemy. If you send them behind the enemy then take the shot it's gonna hit the enemy in the back. This can be used in a ton of ways. Is the enemy behind an unbreakable terrain? Well, is your BC already sent towards them? There is. Hit BC and you're gonna shoot them in the side or shoot them in the back. Are they in a ditch where you can't hit them normally? BC them. Are they somewhere really far away in green lock-on where you normally can't hit them except for your high output snipe? Well, BC stays on the enemy even if they're in green lock-on. So they're not safe no matter where they are when BC is deployed, which makes this weapon a very good weapon. Now you only get one shot, so you really have to understand how this move works, because once you do it, it's just this massive annoyance of just, oh, I'm just flying around minding my own business and I just got sniped in the back of my head, even though both my enemies are right in front of me. And like this right here, yes, it was a little extra to do that, but if that H1 Gundam stayed in that pit, that BC still would have got him. 
which is a very nice thing to do where even if they try to hide, there's no hiding from this move. Okay guys, something I actually forgot to say, which is very important to this guy's kit, so I'll just be very quick with this, and yeah, whoopsie daisies, is when you activate this BC and you put it on enemy A, I can look at enemy B, then BC, and it will hit enemy A. This is very important because you can just be all the way across the other side of the map, attacking this guy, then randomly you can just BC and be like, I wonder if this is going to hit him. So I could just be fighting the Gundam, doing whatever I want, then been like, okay. And I'm like, oh, I got him. It's a very nice move because it doesn't, it's just a surprise shot that can happen at any time. But anyways, let's get back to the video. It's just, once you take the shot, it tracks the second it bounces off the second one. If someone keeps on moving, it's easy to dodge it. So you have to figure out how you want to punish people with this. Now, a few tips to know, and just a very important facts to know, is deploying it doesn't cost ammo. It's once you take the shot that costs ammo. Now, when you take the shot, it has a little bit of a startup, but you can dash out of it. So you don't have to commit to that shot. And an important thing is if you dash out of it, you won't waste ammo. However, they will immediately come back to you and retract. So you have to redeploy them. Also, a thing to know is while you deploy them, it has a little bit of a startup. But if you're in MA mode, it has no startup. But you cannot shoot them in, AA, in MA mode. You can only deploy them. And when they're deployed, you have to stay in MA mode, which is just for like a second, but you can still move and do normal MA mode things. Like example right there, I flew to the right and deployed them. I can get out of MA mode and immediately shoot them. Other than that, it's a very fun tool to use. And, you know, I do have to say it, it has a big factor of the rule of cool which is why I'm hyping them up a lot. It's just a very cool looking weapon. And if something's cool, I'm gonna use it, even if it's not that great, cause it looks cool. Robots are cool, when robots do cool shit, uh, you know, I get stars in my eyes and get awestruck and you know, clap like a little child because cool robots entertain me. Now for MA mode, well, let's just quickly run through MA mode. Nothing too special to talk about. I have gotten a few messages how to enter MA mode, so I'm just gonna say it. If you hold down boost and double tap the same direction, you'll enter MA mode. And while in MA mode, you share your main gun ammo and you can do your AB, which is the four cannons, and it shoots in front of you like any other MA mode, nothing special. However, you do have a different move if you hit melee. If you hit B while in MA mode, you shoot your, I think they're called like ankle cannons. I don't know exactly in the legs that are located, but you shoot those guns and they shoot directly behind you. They have a very nice curve to them. It like, it's actually really shocking on how nice these bullets curve into the enemy. So it can be used if your back is towards the enemy in MA mode and you want to shoot your shots and you want them to curve into the guy. Other than that, you can use your snipe shot in MA mode, however you cannot do the high output one. And when you do your snipe shot in MA mode, no matter what direction you are in, you will turn the entire MA mode towards the enemy then shoot. If you're high in the air and your back is towards the enemy and you do this, it's going to cost a lot of boost to turn around and your MA mode doesn't have the best turning so be careful when you use this. I don't recommend to do this often in MA mode. Now we already covered BC, you can deploy them in MA mode but you can't shoot them. And just to remind you guys, you cannot charge or shoot CSA in MA mode. And if CSA is deployed, it would immediately come back when you enter MA mode. But besides all that, that wraps up this guy's kit. If you're looking for a 3000 cost suit to play that's long range, this is your guy. He's a fun suit and once you get the hang of things, it's kind of entertaining to play. And you know, spamming things at a very long distance, smacking people is really fun. 
Now, as for this special, it's a melee combo. It's a long, hefty combo, but it does a lot of damage. But a very important thing to know is it does an AoE nuke at the end. And if you stay still after doing a burst special, you will get hit by this nuke. So be careful about that. But anyways, that was the EXS Gundam. Overall, nice mobile suit. Might give him a try again in a shenanigans video or play him on stream. But anyways, with the usual outro, my name is Slopkicks. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Have a good one and see you guys next time.